You see this? Some of the books that's absolutely changed my life. Jordan Peterson's 12 Rules for Life, Misfortune 101, Tom Stanley's The Millionaire Next Door, Book Yourself Salad by Michael Port, Secrets of the Millionaire Mind, The Secrets. However, all these books, all this self-help stuff, finance, entrepreneurship, marketing, sales, all that stuff means nothing without this. What is it? We'll unpack it in this episode of the Wealth and Wisdom Series, episode 12, starting in three, two, one. Let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, now I'm getting bigger. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And if you feel our videos have helped you out, like this video. If you've watched multiple videos, please consider hitting subscribe as we journey to 150,000 subs. Okay, let's get into it. All the self-help stuff that you might read, all the self-help stuff that you might consume and conferences that you attend will be worth nothing. Self-help is nothing. Self-help is actually a scam without this, this element that I'm gonna share with you in this episode. Because I look at the book of Proverbs as an instruction manual on how to handle money, how to handle success in your business and your endeavors, written by the richest and wisest king who ever lived, King Solomon. Now, King Solomon uh, has his on this journey. He says, Matt, you want success, you want wealth, prosperity, financial freedom, you wanna be a, a, a philanthropist, you want charity, you want contribution, you wanna be a kingdom builder, you wanna build God's kingdom as an entrepreneur with your finances, with your business. Well, here's the path that you're taking. And along this path that you're taking, there's gonna be a bunch of distractions that keep you or want to take you off this path. There is the path of morality, and right next to it is a path of immorality, and they're so close together. So there's three foundational elements here in the book of uh, Proverbs chapter 12, because every week we've been unpacking a proverb every week for the last 11 weeks. And so if you haven't watched the previous episodes, please consider watching those because there's that buildup. So King Solomon talks about the lifestyle that you want to live, the words and speech that you got to use will then determine the results and the reality that you will live. Again, the lifestyle that you want to live, the speech and the words that you want to use will determine the results and the reality that you are going to live. Okay, so let's take a look at Proverbs at the beginning of it, chapter 12. And here's some things I took away. And I encourage you to don't depend on me to read the entire book of Proverbs for you. I hope that this encourages you to break open your Bible and start looking at chapter 12 a little bit more intently outside of the highlighted verses I'm sharing together with you. But here's some of the big takeaways, lessons I took away from Proverbs chapter 12 in this breakdown of lifestyle, speech, and words, as well as your results and your reality. And the foundational verse is really the first one, the first verse coming out of this chapter, which reads like this. Whomever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. <laughs> what a word, huh? Listen, man, you're stupid if you hate discipline. So listen, my man right here, Malcolm, who's shooting this right now, by the way, Malcolm, turn the camera and show everybody your face. Show everybody our crew, okay, turn it around. There's, there's Ivan back there, there's Malcolm. What's up, Malcolm? Malcolm in the middle, there's a crew back there. Andres back there, right? So Malcolm here, he's a track star, right? Malcolm went to college, full ride scholarship, no student loan debt, praise God. However, with that being said, as a track athlete, guess what he had to submit to in order to earn his college scholarship in track? He had to submit to coaching, and through coaching, he had to submit to discipline. Discipline is a very difficult word. Discipline is a word that a lot of people don't like because it forces you to do the things that you don't want to do. How many times that you've seen a New Year's resolution, people say, I want to get in shape, I want to do this, bop, 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 I declare my intention, and then next thing you know, they get to the gym, they go through one leg day, their legs are sore the entire week, they can barely sit down or get back up, and like, yo, dog, I'm gonna do this again, I'm gonna do this again, I'm gonna do this again, it's okay, man, I'm good, I don't wanna go through that pain anymore. However, discipline will say, yeah, but you said you wanna look at a certain way, you said that you have goals, in me. you said that you're going to accomplish certain goals. See, discipline will show up to help you get to where you wanna go, but a lot of people don't like the word Discipline. So let's take a look at lifestyle. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 2, it reads like this. Good people obtain favor from the Lord, but he condemns those who devise wicked schemes. So if you want to go about your life and you want goodness in your life, don't go about scamming people. I've often said, for the people that go about trying to cut corners and find shortcuts and find unnecessary hacks 
to try to find ways to get rich quick. If you spent that same time, energy, and money to find a shortcut by doing it right the first time without having to worry about the shortcuts, but just following a proven path, well, guess what? A lot of things in your life will turn out for the better. Let's take a look at uh, a wife of noble character. I recently got married seven years ago, and I can't tell you how amazing that's been for my life, but what does it say here about having a wife? For the ladies that's watching this, it means having a husband of noble character. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, it reads like this. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. So think about this. How many times do we run into relationship problems? How many times when you're dating somebody or have a business partnership, and you kind of ask a little bit about their past? And then you wonder if that's any indication of what's likely to be in your present or in your future. And then you get hints. And then you get tip-offs that, wow, this person hasn't changed. Just because I'm dating them or just because I married them doesn't mean they're necessarily going to change. So a person that you should look for to live the life that you want should have noble character. And I'm going to love that word noble character because Proverbs 31, the last proverb we're going to share here, is going to discuss what a, a person, a wife, a husband of noble character looks like. All right, let's move on to the next one. Be nobody with help versus somebody yet broke. What do I mean by that? Chapter 12, verse 9, it reads like this. It's better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. How many times do you see people go about there, they're living the life, they got the car, they got the house, they got the clothes, they got the, they got the travel, they're eating at the fancy restaurants, but deep down inside, they got nothing. Nothing saved up, they're deep in debt. Well, King Solomon says that, hey, listen, it's better than nobody. I'd rather you just stay at home, but not be in debt. I'd rather you stay at home, but not faking it to make it. I'd rather you stay at home by not showing this fake lifestyle on social media that you know deep in, down inside that you're not living, but yet you have help. You have money working for you. You're working on your career. You're building towards your next. I'd rather you take that path than the initial fake it to make it type route. Another thing that King Solomon says here is work your land. Work your land. A tip off to laziness here. Work your land versus chasing fantasies. Listen, there's certain things that entrepreneurs do in terms of chasing their fantasy. You, you want to be a prophet about something God has prophetically spoken into your life. It, it, I don't want you to confuse that versus somebody not working the land. Let's actually just go into Proverbs chapter 12, verse 11. It reads like this. Because those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. And I was troubled with this a little bit because I was chasing a fantasy for a minute. But at the same time, I realized I was getting through counsel authority. Because so I was talking to a pastor. I said, "Hey, a pastor, Proverbs says I'm chasing a fantasy. I want to be financially free, financially independent. I want to have my own business. I want to call my own shots. I want to get this car, live in this neighborhood, and have access and options for my kids." He said, "No, that's not a chasing a fantasy. You know why? Because you're working your land. So people will chase a fantasy. They'll be stuck in video games, stuck in la la land, stuck in. I wish I had this. I wish I had that. But yet they don't work." their land. That's the difference. So if you believe that you want to change this area of your life, please put this affirmation below. I am working my land, not just chasing fantasies. I am working my land, not just chasing fantasies. Put it in the comment section below. Uh, next one talks about animals. Yes, it talks about animals. For all the pet lovers out there, animals out there, this one's for you, but it's not in the context that you think it is because it says here, righteous, righteous care for the needs of their animals. What does it mean? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 10. It reads like this. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. See, back then, animals were the vehicles for them to work their land, to work their farms, to get them to run their business. What about you? Yes, your pets. I will include pets in this conversation too as well. But what are animals today? Your animals are your car. The things that uh, help, you, help you go to and from, uh, back and forth from work. You might drive a motorcycle, you might ride a bicycle, you might have people that work with you and for you. Those are your quote unquote animals, a bad translation of it, but these animals, these helpers are blessed because you have a righteous care for them. You treat them horribly, guess what? These things will revolt back on you, again, based on the lifestyle that you want to live, that you don't have to look over your back and worry about. Okay, what about words? How important is speech and words in building the life and reality that you want to live? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 14. It reads like this. From the fruit of the lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands bring them reward. Growing up in Chicago, we always used to talk smack to each other. I totally get it. 
And the more I started getting older, the more I realized there's ways to challenge people. There's ways to come across people, but not smack talk them, make them feel minimal, so therefore you feel higher. There's, there's no benefit to making somebody feel smaller, so therefore you feel more special and better about yourself. Something to consider. Way of fools versus what for the wise, listen to advice. Do you want to follow the way of the fools or do you want to listen to the wisdom in advice that you're given? Proverbs ch chapter 12, verse 15, it reads like this. The way of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Listen, this is a big reason why I spent my entire 30s repaying the mistakes of my 20s. Do you know why? Because I thought that my way was the best way. I don't want to listen to somebody who was older. Oh, I can do it better than them. I don't want to listen to somebody that has been there, done that. Oh, you know, they don't really know what they're talking about because I got technology today that they didn't have before. However, there's wisdom of those that have been there, done that before, those that are more experienced than you. And had I done something differently in that category, I personally, individually, may have experienced what I'm experiencing today much sooner in my life versus later. God detests liars, but he loves the trustworthy. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22 it reads like this. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. So, how many times do we set ourselves a goal or we share white lies? Or, you know what, uh, big, biggest thing in the Filipino community. Oh, uh, you know what, it's gonna be a six o'clock party, but everybody gets that at 8.30. You know by the way, to me, that's annoying. I grew up with that, by the way. And I realized how annoying that was. When you say, hey, I'm going to start something at 6 o'clock, and then everybody shows up at 8.30. What do they call it? Fashionably late? Annoying, because that's not the way business runs. And when you're looking at, you know, by the way, somebody said, well, man, that's no big deal. Not no big deal. I know it's, it's not a big deal, grow up, because you think it's no big deal. However, in the business world, if you treat clients that way, if you, you, you treat your partners that way, it's not good for you. It's not going to work out well. Uh, the other one here, fools show annoyance versus the prudent who overlooks insults. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 16, it reads like this. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlooks insults. How many times do I get trolls on social media? How many times do we get people not looking at my side of looking at things and right away they insult me? Based on my beliefs, based on my position on certain things, especially today. How many people are shouting people down just because they don't agree on a couple things? They agree on, uh, the Democrats don't agree with the Republicans. People don't agree with how things are done in school. People don't agree how things are done in church. People don't agree how things are done at their job, at their office, their school, wherever they may be. People don't agree. And what is the result today? Instead of having effective communication and listening to somebody else's side, what do people do today? They shout each other down. Well, fools will show annoyance to that. Last but not least in this category, speech and using your words. The prudent keep knowledge versus the fools. What do they do? Let's look at Proverbs chapter 12, verse 23. It reads like this. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. So when you're looking at the different conversation you'll have with people, the wise will say, you know what? I know what I'm about. I've done research. I listen to my advisors. I've had a multitude of counselors give me guidance on this subject matter. But the people have never been there done that. People that have never been there done it. This, I follow this way, follow this way. That's why I'm hesitant. It's not an investment strategy for me. But when I'm looking at things like Bitcoin, when I'm looking at things like at NFTs, I'm, by the way, I can't tell you every day that I get hit up to invest in this Bitcoin, invest in this stock, invest in this. I've got my values and principles that I stick by, that I ride by. And guess what? It's kept, it's kept me out of a lot of unnecessary madness and craziness and losses of money and lo losses of time. Versus me saying, you know what? Let me just jump right into it. Let me just jump right into it. Just because everybody is doing it doesn't mean it's the right thing for you to follow. I'm thinking about my career when I first started in the early 2000s in the insurance industry. How many people are trying to get me into real estate? How many people are trying to get me into mortgages? And I stuck with insurance. Guy looks at me, hey, Matt, you know, I know you just got out the military. You're starting to make $4,000 a month, $5,000 a month. But I just quit my job at, uh, at working in a mixed martial arts gym at the gym I was going to, in my first month doing mortgages, I made $20,000 this month. You just made four grand, you've been at this for, for 18 months? Dude, I'm smoking you. Second month, he makes another 20 grand. I'm making $5,000. Now, two, two years into it, he's, he's, he's killing it, he's crushing. He's buying the cars, he's in the house, 
the neighborhood that I love to live in and put my schools, my, my kids into the school in. And here I am with my broke down Cadillac Seville. But next thing you know what happened, 08, 09. Everybody in the real estate and mortgage business lost everything. They lost everything. Imagine going to the mortgage company and say, hey, listen, I got 20 mortgage applications to submit because people either want to finance or buy a home. And the bank says, we got no money to lend. What? I got a mortgage to pay. I can't sell loans. I can't do loans. No, I got my own expenses. I've got a forty, fifty thousand dollars a month lifestyle, and you're telling me I can't sell anything to make that money to fund and finance my lifestyle? That's correct. That's exactly what happened to people in mortgages and real estate. And then worse, people that owned homes, their homes were worth less than what the actual mortgage was worth. They're underwater on their loans. So here I am, still in the insurance business because my values and principles told me that no matter what happens, this is a needs-based business. People want to buy a home, they don't need to buy a home. People can rent, people don't always own, but people need to make sure they're not a burden to people that they love and care about, hence the need for life insurance. I stuck with the life insurance business. I stuck with the life insurance industry. People need to plan for retirement without worrying about losing money unnecessarily to risk. I stuck with my guns with the insurance business. And guess what happened? All of these folks lost all the money. And guess what? I see the same cycle happening again. Even though short term, I lost out on making a lot of money in the short term, but I was focused in on the long game. Do you know why? Because I had the right counsel. I chose to listen to the right counselors in my ear. So what type of results do you want to live in your life? What type of reality do you want to live in your life? Well, King Solomon provides some massive guidance here in, in, in chapter 12 of Proverbs. He talks about the diligent hands. Let's read Proverbs chapter 12, verse 24. It reads like this. Diligent hands will rule but laziness ends in forced labor. How many people are working unnecessarily right now because previously during this pandemic, they didn't choose to learn a new skill. Previously in this pandemic, people didn't choose to effectively make use of the unemployment check that they were getting. I had so many people at my office. Ivan, you remember that? I had so many people at my office. Matter of fact, one of Ivan's coworkers who's no longer working together with us, he was gloating about how much his friends were making on unemployment and how much they didn't have to go to work. But guess what, when those unemployment checks ran out, guess what? They decided to go back to work and worse, they lost so much momentum. They lost so much credibility with the people that they said no to go to work for because they were making more money on unemployment. So the loyalty was lost. They realized that that person wasn't about relationship. Laziness was forced into labor. Now a lot of these guys and gals today, they're forced into unnecessary work because they gotta keep up with having to pay for higher gas costs and higher food. And by the way, what did President Biden talk about a couple of days ago? You know what he talked about? The world now facing food shortages? Are you, are you kidding me? Food shortages? Well, with that news, what are you gonna do? Blame the government? Blame this, blame that? Of course we can blame the government, of course we can point fingers, but in the meantime, guess what King Solomon recommends? Be diligent, work your business, work your land, work your career, expand, grow, network, and you will rule. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 26, talks about friends. It reads like this. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on the riches of the hunt. So the hunt's in, the money's in, but the lazy says, ah, just let it go. No need to cook it. No need to maintain it. No need to take care of it. Well, guess what the diligent is doing? I'm reinvesting it. I'm making sure my family's taken care of when the worst case scenario comes around. And last but not least, we are walking along a path together. What path do you want to walk? Verse 28, it reads like this. In the way of righteousness, there is life. Along that path is immorality. So along the path of morality also is the path along that way. The same path is the path of immorality. So which path? Which choice and options are you going to choose, especially when push comes to shove? And last but not least, I want to share with you this because John Maxwell shares, uh, this is the John Maxwell Leadership Bible, and he talks about the law of environment and how important an environment is for you to grow. Right now, we got a bunch of our guys from California, Nebraska, Hawaii. We got them all right here in my office right now. We're training them how to be entrepreneurs in the insurance industry. We've got people running agencies and businesses all across the country, and we have this in our environment. Here's why because how you choose your environment has everything it has everything to do with who you surround yourself with because the environment you have to be in should be conducive to where you wanna grow. So if you don't wanna do nothing, guess what? You're hanging around people that do nothing. That's conducive to that environment. But if you are somebody that wants to be somebody, 
because wants to say, I want to be a first generation cash flow faith-based millionaire. Well, guess what? You need to be in a conducive environment that forces you to grow. So let's share this graphic right here. So there's six steps in this graphic. Number one, assess your current environment. Number two, change yourself and your environment. Number three, change who you spend your time with. Number four, challenge yourself in your new environment. Number five, focus in on the moment. And number six, move forward despite of criticism. And it's all about the law of environment. Your law, this law of environment is either cause you to grow or sadly, the dreams and goals that you have are sadly going to die based on the environment that you choose to be in. Some questions I want you to ask yourself as you wrap up this chapter about self-help being a scam without these important areas to weave yourself through. Number one, am I stretching myself? Are the people around me stretching me? Like, are you around a group of people and you, need to, you think you need to walk a little taller? You need to stretch your knowledge? You need to stretch your information, you need to stretch your counsel, you need to stretch your questions. Is the current environment that you are part of right now, is it causing you to stretch or is it causing you to settle? Because if you settle, then you're not growing, but if you're stretching, you are growing. Number two, are you really sincere and serious with yourself? If you really want to grow, do you think somebody's gonna hand you a million bucks? Here, you're a lucky guy, here's a million bucks, now you're financially free, financially independent. Ain't gonna happen that way. But are you sincere, however, are you sincere? Because what King Solomon says, being the richest and wisest king who ever lived, based on these values and principles, if you're diligent, if you're prudent, and this, but there's a couple words that were sticking out to me. What does prudent mean? Prudent means acting with and showing care and thoughtfulness for the future. Are you prudent? Are you diligent? Are you not lazy? These are some of the key words I'm taking out of Proverbs chapter 12. Prudence about your future, diligent in your work, avoiding laziness, embracing discipline. Last but not least, question number three. If you follow this law of environment, you stretch yourself and you're sincere about making change in your life, then who are you gonna be in one year? Who are you gonna be in five years? Who are you gonna be in 10 years? Same, same flip side is if you don't stretch yourself, if you settle, if you're not sincere, or you're not serious about yourself, where will you be then in one year, five years, or 10 years? So, before I let you go, please check out these other two videos here before I wrap stuff up here. Follow the previous Proverbs in previous weeks that ramp up what we'll be talking about. And by the looks of it, these type of one-liners from King Solomon are continuing for the next few weeks here. So I look forward to unpacking these one-line verses together with you and how you can implement that into your life to live the God kind of life that pleases God, that you are enriched because of the values and principles of God, so therefore you can be a bigger kingdom entrepreneur to serve God's people and let light and life shine to you and through you so a lot more people know what the difference is between righteous and wicked, especially during these moments. With that being said, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your comments, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comments section below. I promise you I read them and I respond to them as much as I can, so please, your feedback helps me create better content for this channel. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you got value from this episode, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of these things, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I've been enjoying this Wealth and Wisdom series here. Every Sunday night, we're breaking down a proverb every week for the next 31 weeks. That being said, from Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.